What is going on, investors? Hopefully, you guys are having a great day out there. Time to talk about Alibaba Group. This company just reported earnings this morning. We'll jump into the numbers. Alibaba doesn't do a great job at presenting these. It's a little confusing. So if you've jumped into these numbers or you want to, I'll help explain them a little bit to you and help uh, you know organize your thoughts a little bit just in case you want to jump into these numbers yourself. We'll take a look at revenue and profits. And then we'll also jump over the stock chart. The stock has been in the news over the last weeks and months, and it has created some downward selling pressure in the stock. Now it has rebounded. We'll identify just some really key levels in the intermediate term. So if you want to add to your Alibaba position or start one or potentially maybe even sell out of it, we'll talk about some levels that you might want to look for. Now, Alibaba's been under pressure over the last few weeks and months particularly because of this anti-monopoly probe in China. So it's targeted uh, primarily at the Ant Group, which was going to have a large, I think like a $35 billion IPO here in the United States. And it got botched be, uh, in some ways because of Jack, some of the comments that Jack Ma made and then following China coming out with this anti-monopoly probe into the company. Now, Jack Ma was rumored to be missing after this. And so it kind of got uh, rumors swirling about what's going on in China, what's going on with Jack Ma, but he ended up resurfacing, thankfully for his family and things like that. He resurfaced and shares of Alibaba have rebounded since then. We'll see that when we go over to the stock chart. Now, related to this antitrust monopoly now. So we it, it appears that China is kind of moving forward on this, but they haven't finalized things. So it appears that they have some draft rules in place, but it appears that they will give firms like Ant Group, Alibaba, and others about a one-year grace period to comply. So I think this is kind of a more neutral thing. This is not the kind of harsh penalty that we, we some investors might have anticipated with Alibaba. Certainly, I think if this was a harsh antitrust rules that were being set forth, the stock would have sold off and far more than it has, maybe even retesting these lows back here when this news kind of initially broke. So I actually think this is a positive and we'll eventually see the ant group probably be restructured and reorganized. They even talked about that a little bit in the regulatory filings that there's still some uncertainty around that business. But once these rules kind of get clarified, Alibaba will be able to move forward with that and maybe potentially with an IPO of that company. Now, from a valuation perspective, Alibaba actually doesn't look too bad at all. This is a price, to, at least from a price to sales basis. I've got a price to sales here over the last five years. We see it's trading at about eight times sales. Now, obviously, it's been lower than that. It's been, you know, low as six and a half times sales, but it has been quite a bit higher than that, even twice, two times higher than that. So from a price to sales basis, Alibaba actually looks like a decent investment at the current moment. Now, let's jump into the numbers because it's not the full story. If you could just look at ratios and graphs like that and make investment decisions, boy, everybody sitting out there would be a millionaire. It takes a little bit more than that. Let's jump into the numbers here. We've got three months ended here. We've got the local Chinese currency here, the RMB. Forgive me if I refer to that as United States dollars. That would be this co a column here. Now we've got this core commerce here. So they've got this kind of core commerce and then they've got some more like this is total core commerce. So they've got these other things that are kind of, you know, still developing. So we see here in the core commerce, we've got $23.5 billion worth of Red, this is revenue that we're looking at here. That is up a 39% over the last year. That's phenomenal growth. Now we see we've got other retail services and wholesale and things going on. That totaled at 12, that $30 billion. Okay, that is up 38%. So both commerce kind of divisions that they operate under are growing at a 38 to 39% clip. Now they've got other businesses here. It's kind of like basically like Amazon. Amazon. You've got kind of the commerce that is kind of the big time revenue and, 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 and in profits when we take a look at that here in a second. But they've also got this cloud computing, which is not like Amazon. Amazon's cloud computing is highly profitable and is scaled up, you know, considerably. When we look at the profits here, it's not quite the case, but it could create, uh, you know, growth opportunity, especially in profits for Alibaba in the future. So we have cloud computing. We've got digital media like, uh, you know, TV and video. 
video games and things like that. Now we see here that cloud computing is actually up 50% over the last year to 2.5 billion. And then we've got this uh, the, the total revenue, so our co total revenues combined with commerce and cloud and a little bit of digital media came in at $33.8 billion. So we grew our commerce by 38, 39%, our cloud by 50%. That gives us a total year over year change on our revenues and an impressive 37%. Now let's see what it's doing to our operating income. So here's our income. They don't break this out. Great. They don't have it all in on one single form. Like I like to see. So we kind of have to flip between these two, you know, two views. So we've got core commerce here. Core commerce went to 9.1. This is our revenue here. We've got $9.1 billion for the last three months. We see here for the last nine months, we've got 20 billion. So it's actually a very consistent business business because you can this is for nine months so you can times this by three you get very close to 20 billion now we see here cloud computing not profitable yet but boy it's getting very close we see here digital media all this other stuff in parentheses is not a profit that gets us down to a total profit here for the last three months at 7.5 billion dollars this is our income from our operations we see here for the nine months it was sitting right at about 15 billion dollars so they actually have had an excellent quarter in terms of their operating income for the last three months. So some things you want to look forward to with Alibaba is this continued growth in cloud computing should eventually turn this, at least from an operating perspective, should turn cloud computing positive in terms of its operating income. Now, Moving over to the stock chart, some very critical levels we're actually approaching here with Alibaba. I've got a lot of lines here, man. You might be like, what are all these lines for? Okay, we've got some pretty clear price action in this one. And so I think there's two critical levels that you want to keep in mind when it comes to Alibaba. First of all, I'll take a look at the upside right at about $270 per share. Anytime this stock has kind of peaked its head, once it broke below 270, it really has not been able to get above 270 for several months now, going all the way back into November. In fact, it broke down very decisively all the way into the, you know, basically the $200 range after breaking our 255 target. So we're stuck in the middle of the range, in my opinion, with Alibaba. We've got the lower end of the range at $255 and and the upper end of the range at 270. That means those levels are very key. If we break 250 with any kind of momentum and any kind of volume, 255, excuse me, this stock could retest this cluster of price action down here in the $230 range. Okay, that's quite a bit of downside. Now, 270 is proving to be a resistance point for the stock on the way up. That is because you see all this price action here. We go from 270 all the way up to basically $320. This price action here is what we call trapped money. All these people that bought the stock over $270 as Alibaba approaches that mark and it potentially kind of goes up above it, they are stepping in and selling. And so when can that momentum break is anybody's guess. But you would have to see Alibaba decisively break over $270 per share on momentum and with good force with a big green candle to propel us back up into this range. But if we were, there would be some stops along the train track. We've got 280, we've got 285, 290. And again, we could potentially retest all-time highs at 320. That would take a tremendous amount of momentum and tremendous amount of buying support behind this stock. But the two levels that I want you to look out for with Alibaba are really at 255 and 270. If we stay within and consolidate within this range, well, eventually the stock should break one of those levels and pick a direction either down or up. This is not necessarily a spot where I'd be like loving my life, jumping in here and buying Alibaba, but it can create some buying opportunities if you have conviction one way or another on this stock. I think a much better entry point is if we break this two. 255 level, we get below our 50 day moving average and we get into this cluster of price action between 225 and 240. That would be an interesting spot, in my opinion, to acquire shares. If that materializes, 
I'm not 100% sure. So Alibaba stuck right in the middle of the range down on earnings today. We should get some more clarity over the weeks and months ahead on this anti-monopoly probe by the Chinese government. That should be a, a relatively positive catalyst to the stock as long as it's not a very hard penalizing antitrust probe, which at the current moment doesn't appear that it will be. So hopefully you guys had a great one with this one. Let me know in the comments below what you you're doing with Alibaba Group. Would love to hear it. Thanks for tuning in today. Good luck with your investments.